concludes all operations of the emergency alert system. All stations may now resume regular programs for expanding its sphere of influence on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy and ruthless conspiracy. And ruthless conspiracy. And ruthless conspiracy. Okay, so let's talk about the war. However, instead of talking about Russia and Ukraine to start, let's talk about North Korea for a moment. North Korea has been firing a lot of missiles lately. North Korea fired a ballistic missile and hundreds of artillery shells towards the sea on Friday. This was actually North Korea's 15th missile launch since it resumed testing activities on September 25th. So North Korea said on Monday its recent missile tests were simulations of nuclear strikes on South Korean and US targets. They claim that this is in response to their quote-unquote dangerous military exercises involving U.S. aircraft carriers. So on Friday, North Korea fired 80 shells off their east coast and followed that up with about 200 more off their west coast. In a separate event, North Korea flew about 12 warplanes by their rival's border. And this actually caused South Korea to scramble 30 fighter jets of their own. In another recent North Korean test, this included a new intermediate-range missile that flew over Japan and this actually demonstrated a potential range to reach the U.S. Pacific territory of Guam. Now, I do have a theory about all of this. Is it a stretch for me to ask if North Korea is just being used by China, using them as leverage on the global chessboard? Now, I believe that they may be helping with their weapons tech, but to what end? Now, perhaps maybe China is just playing North Korea. Maybe they're promising them economic partnerships. You know, a spot within their new payment system, the one they're building to move away from the dollar. But in the end, who knows, North Korea might be toppled, absorbed, destroyed, whatever the case may be. And really, I don't know, I just think North Korea is being used by China in one way or another. Some sort of proxy distraction, or however I should put it. Let me know what you think though, and be sure to let me know if you think I'm way off base on that one. However, one thing is for sure, the alliance between North Korea and China is widely recognized. And China recently said that they want to ease tension and move towards meaningful talks again. And I don't think that's true. However, on top of that, Kim Jong-un has repeatedly said that he will not re-enter diplomatic nuclear talks. And really, again, who knows? War is all about posturing. So from an outside perspective, it's pretty tough to tell. So I guess we just gotta see how this develops. However, it's time to talk about the war in Ukraine. In reference to the Crimea Bridge explosion, Putin threatened Kiev with even tougher responses if anything like that happened again. However, the airstrikes began anyway, and we'll get into that in a second. Moving on, as for the Nord Stream sabotage, Sweden actually blocked a joint investigation with Germany and Denmark into the Nord Stream explosions. Sweden says, and I quote, the safety classification of the investigation is too high to share the result with other countries. So yeah, that's a little suspicious. The thing is, once you start the sabotage game, who knows where it's going to end. For example, we had some reports that long distance rail services in northern Germany were suspended entirely, and that's because two communication cables had been cut at two different places. And when speaking of initial indications, security authorities said that it could be sabotage. From there, the German consulate in Kiev was hit by Russian strikes. And the thing is, is that Putin has been retaliating, bombing Ukraine consistently, killing civilians and hitting targets. So Russia was trying to take out key infrastructure in major Ukrainian cities like Kiev, but they hit about six or seven in total. And yes, they were hitting targets like power plants and water plants. Anyway, check out this video. As a Ukrainian woman is walking down the street, an airstrike hits. <laughs> How crazy is that? Anyway, moving on. In a call between Biden and Zelensky, well, the US government has pledged continued support, and this includes advanced air defense systems. Now, as far as I understand it, those air defense systems can strike at long distance ground targets too. So that seems to be an escalation. Now, I'm just putting one and one together here, but we are starting to get videos like this. A direct hit on a local substation in Belgorod, Russia. After this strike, part of the city was reportedly without electricity.
so we're sending advanced weapon systems and now Russia is being bombed. Yeah, that seems like an escalation to me. Okay, so from there, Lukashenko claims that Ukraine is preparing an attack on Belarus, and as a result, Belarus has ordered its troops to be tested for combat readiness. This comes after huge quantities of Russian soldiers entered the country. They went on to say that a turning point will be coming within weeks. Okay, so from there, France has said that they are going to support the war effort now as well, and I believe they already have been. I'm pretty sure I've seen videos of French military on the ground. More than likely, that's through NATO. Anyway, Macron comes out and says that he does not want nuclear war, so that's good. However, he was blasted by NATO for destroying, and I quote, the West United Front. They want this war. And of course, and I mean, it's crazy. On Friday the 14th, the Kremlin came out and said that their goals can actually be achieved through peace talks. But again, no one wants to engage in peace talks. I don't know what to tell you. Everyone is bloodthirsty and ready for this. And apparently, the US is on the ground with special forces too. That was kind of like a half cover up, because it was presented in this story just as a nonchalant detail, and no one really pushed back on it. Mainstream journalists are not asking questions. We have special forces on the ground. That kind of seems like a big step. And something important that, you know, I don't know, maybe professional journalists might want to follow up on. And you know, it's just really weird to think about how powerful political tribalism is and echo chambers on social media. 10 years ago, if you asked me if a bunch of Democrat voters and yuppie middle class hipsters would be celebrating a war and continuing to push for escalation towards nuclear war, I would have thought you were insane. And yet, here we are. Now, it does show one of two things. It either shows how naive I was, or it shows how quickly group mentality spread. You decide. And you know, it's really strange. There's a big group of people who are terrified of COVID, but are really relishing the possibility of World War III. I don't know, mass formation psychosis, I have no idea what's going on, but it's crazy. I came across this clip, it was, I don't know if it was a Russian guy or a Ukrainian soldier, but he was laying in this field, and there was a drone overhead, he's doing the sign of the cross and just praying, and you read the comments, these people are bloodthirsty maniacs, but I don't know, social media is insane, people are insane. I don't know, it's like the closing in the last video, the whole world has gone mad. Everybody has lost their minds, and it's time we act accordingly. Okay, anyway, there is one theory going around, that Russia is gathering troops and positioning themselves to conduct an offensive once the ground freezes. Now to get a better understanding of this, we're going to read an article from 1945, and I quote, Russia appears to be readying for a major incursion into Ukraine as early as November. Until then, the objective appears to be just to buy time. Buy time for the arrival of major reinforcements resulting from Putin's mobilization order. However, since September, the Russian forces have been quietly stockpiling massive amounts of fuel and other supplies necessary to launch and sustain a major offensive, the largest buildup since the war began. They go on to say, and I quote, No one can predict the outcome of the coming offensive, but the trends do not favor Ukraine. They have lost a lot of the initial momentum from their counteroffensive and have suffered significant losses, just as Russia began to attack critical infrastructure throughout the country at a level not seen since the war started, while simultaneously preparing to introduce potentially another 100,000 or more troops to the next phase of the war, with additional waves likely in the winter. The temperature has already started dropping into the 30s in Ukraine, and typically from November through January, snow can be expected, along with sub-zero temperatures. Now, with Ukraine's energy and industrial infrastructure continuing to suffer battle damage, Russia's energy reserves are virtually unlimited, and its military industrial capacity has also been mobilized. By this winter, they will be producing a constant stream of war material and ammunition, while Ukraine will be almost completely dependent on supplies from the West that may or may not arrive in time. It is clear, however, that wars are not fought on paper. And if anything has been made clear from the outset, the Ukrainian troops have been far more effective and resilient than anyone predicted prior to February. The harsh reality, however, is that the Russian military and the government are likewise learning lessons and becoming hardened to the realities of full-scale war. Therefore, no one can predict with any accuracy how this next phase of war will unfold. But it is very clear that the level of death and destruction is about to rise considerably, making the life of Ukrainian civilians even more horrific. And again, does everybody think escalating the war is a good idea? And I quote again, 
It's entirely possible. As ever more powerful US weapons pour into Ukraine and Russian forces suffer yet more defeats, that the Russian president might indeed believe that the season for threats is ending, and only the detonation of a nuclear weapon will convince Western powers to back off. If so, the war in Ukraine could prove historic in the worst sense imaginable, the first conflict since World War II to lead to nuclear devastation. But hold on, Ukraine is not the only place on the planet where nuclear war could erupt in the near future. Sad to say, around the island of Taiwan, where US and Chinese forces are engaging in ever more provocative military maneuvers, there is also an increasing risk that such moves by both sides could lead to nuclear escalation. So okay, while neither American nor Chinese officials have explicitly threatened the use of such weaponry, both sides have highlighted possible extreme outcomes. When Joe Biden last spoke with Xi Jinping by telephone on July 29th, the Chinese president warned him, and I quote, to those who play with fire will perish by it. Yes, that is an ambiguous warning to be sure, but it is a threat that could be interpreted to include the use of nuclear weapons. As if to underscore that point, on September 4th, the day after Pelosi met with senior Taiwanese officials in Taipei, China fired 11 Dongfang missiles. Many Western observers believe that the barrage was meant as a demonstration of Beijing's ability to attack any US naval vessels that might come to Taiwan's aid. However, that's not all. The Dong Feng 15 has a range of 600 miles and is believed to be capable of delivering not only a conventional payload, but also a nuclear one. In the days that followed, China also sent nuclear-capable H-6 heavy bombers across the median line into the Taiwan Strait. Worse yet, state-owned media displayed images of Dong Feng 17, a hypersonic ballistic missile also believed to carry nuclear weapons, and it was being moved into positions off of Taiwan. The implicit message on both sides is that a nuclear war might be possible, and although, unlike with Putin's comments, the American media has not highlighted the way Taiwan might actually be the place to trigger nuclear war. Yes, the potential for this is rather ominous. Now G7 leaders released a statement. They say any use of chemical, biological, or nuclear weapons by Russia would be met with severe consequences. And on this front, NATO said on Friday that they would launch its annual nuclear exercise, Steadfast Noon. This will be occurring on Monday, with up to 60 aircraft taking part in training flights over Belgium, the North Sea, and Britain to practice the use of US nuclear bombs based in Europe. And I quote, the nuclear drills, which do not involve live bombs, are taking place amid heightened tensions after Russia repeatedly threatened nuclear strikes in Ukraine following major military setbacks on the battlefield. And I quote again, Steadfast Noon is likely to coincide with Moscow's own annual nuclear drills, dubbed GROM which are normally conducted in late October and in which Russia tests its nuclear-capable bombers, submarines, and missiles. Okay, for the last story, Putin moves nuclear bombs to air bases near Finland and Norway as tensions rise over possible use of nukes. So yeah, in essence, things are not looking up. Now let's talk about how the war can plunge the whole world into a new version of the Dark Ages, through an energy crisis. First though, check this out. This video right here was generated by AI Neural Networks, based on real news headlines. This illustrates the future that awaits Europe. Life in Europe is about to get very, very dystopian. Okay, so we have a story about Russia starting a new project to build a new pipeline with Turkey, in some attempt to bypass the West. And there have already been reports of alleged sabotage, or expected sabotage. 
And one of the last stories to go over, Saudi Arabia has decided to back Russia and are stiffing the US establishment. OPEC said on Monday that it would reduce oil production next month. This is the cartel's first output cut since the depths of the pandemic. Biden has tried to get them to wait until after the midterms in an effort to help their election chances. However, Saudi Arabia told them to shove it. Now, as far as I understand it, our entire economy, the power of the dollar, is unfortunately directly tied to our relationship with Saudi Arabia. I just don't think people realize how severe this could be, nor the fact that when you F with the money, you get the gun. So, in essence, this also adds to the escalation tensions. In the video playing right now, you can see Joe Biden being interviewed while eating ice cream, and he is asked about the Saudi OPEC debacle. Well, Biden says, and I quote, I am not concerned about the strength of the dollar. I am concerned about the rest of the world. Inflation is worldwide. It's worse off everywhere than it is in the United States. The problem is the lack of economic growth in other countries. So, the President of the United States does not care about the value and strength of the dollar. That is an insane thing to say. How crazy is that? And I quote, he's worried about the world. Well, it's just a hunch, but it's probably because the plan is to collapse the entire economy and install a programmable CBDC. It's one of the only explanations that actually makes sense. We'll talk more about this in the next video, because the war, the economic collapse, the energy crisis, and introducing CBDCs and social credit scores are all a part of the same agenda. But there is a lot of proof that this is a plan. At the same time this is happening, at the same time. On October 6th, the US establishment weighed the complete block on offshore drilling. Offshore drilling happens to be essential to American energy security. Now, I always say this is a plan, but come on, this is. This is intentional. Of course it is. Years ago, could you imagine, while the US is facing world war, that they would deplete their strategic energy reserves, destroy energy production domestically, dismantle the energy market globally, and as everything collapses, continue with their plan to ban offshore drilling. I mean, come on. Not only is this a direct national security threat, seeing as you can't win a war if you are not energy independent, or at the very least, have enough reserves to run the war machine. However, it is also a direct assault on the US citizens. The level of chaos that will come from this will be unprecedented, from food shortages to infrastructure. It will all collapse with their energy policies. And then, only then, can they reset the world. Alright, so that's it for the war updates. Be sure to check back for the new videos. We have a lot of stuff to talk about in the next few days. Anyway, once again, this is Helio Wave. If you like the content, like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you want to. If you're in a position to, consider subscribing on Locals or Subscribestar. However, make sure you disobey those true fascistas, and yes, I do hope you have a good night.